Alright, it's time for another patron review, and today we're going to discuss Mario Bava's directorial debut, 1960's The Black Sunday, a.k.a. The Mask of Satan. And this one stars Barbara Steele, and this is a black and white movie, and this was my first time watch. Now, this is a movie that's very highly praised, it's got a very high Rotten Tomatoes score, but I don't give a shit what Rotten Tomatoes thinks. And it's got a really high IMDb score, so it's a very beloved movie. It's been on a lot of, you know, top 100 lists, top whatever lists, horror movies, best movies of all time. And while I liked it, I don't like it that much. I was not, like, in love with the movie. Now, this movie is about a witch in, like, the 1600s that gets burnt at the stake. She gets killed, and then a couple centuries later, she's after the family that did it. I think it was her own family, right? Her own brother killed her, and now she's after the descendants. Two centuries later, she's getting revenge. It's a revenge movie. A witch revenge movie. So, uh, I think, going into my positives, one of the biggest things that most people really love about this movie is the atmosphere. This movie is very atmospheric. It's very rich in just gothic horror atmosphere. There's lots of fog, cemetery sets, the whole movie looks like it's on like a stage, like a sound stage, but it doesn't hurt the experience because the set designs look fantastic. It's just, it's got so much mood and just, like I said, gothic horror atmosphere that just works for this kind of story. And I love that it's like a period piece. It's in like the 1800s, opens up in the 1600s, and it just, it looks great. So the look of the movie, the atmosphere, that's the best thing about it to me. And, you know, some of the cinematography, the camera work, you know, just some pretty cool shots here. I love the opening. Uh, I just thought the whole execution, I thought that looked pretty brutal. What they did to her and the mask and them just hammering this mask of nails onto her face. That was pretty gnarly for the time. And so there's some cool effects in here. There's not a whole lot, but for the time, there were some pretty cool effect shots in the movie. There's a few moments of some creepy imagery as well, and that's really about it. That's all the good stuff I took away from the movie. Um, in case you haven't noticed, I have a sore throat, so this is not what I normally sound like. Now, the negatives for this movie is that the middle, to me, I just lost interest. It just dragged for me. The pacing, it's, I guess, you know, it just paces like an older movie, Movies weren't as fast as they are today, but man, the middle of this movie, the second act, whew, I just, I lost interest. It was just a little too slow for me, and this is a Italian movie, and it had just really bad, like, ADR, English dubbing, so, like, whoever was speaking for these people, it was just very bad performances. It was just very stiff ADR performances, and... There was music missing in scenes where it would have helped. Like, there's, like, you know, it's supposed to be, like, these intense fights between people, and then the music would just go away, so it's just awkward. And I feel like that's just Mario Bava's thing. He did that in, uh, what was it called, Bay of Blood, where two guys were fighting, and that's when the music went away. It's like, I feel like there should be music here. So there was just m missing music that was just weird, and just, like, a lot of older movies... Like this one, there's like a love interest, there's like a romance between two characters that just did not work for me at all. It was just, there was no connection between Katya and Andre. Like, at at one point in the movie, he's acting like if she dies, he's going to like kill himself. And it's like, dude, you guys haven't even went on a date. You've never even like held hands, I don't think. Was there a scene I just wasn't look, paying attention to? Like, there was no connection between these two people. But towards the end, he's like, Oh my God, if she dies, I'm just not going to be able to move on. I'm going to be so heartbroken. I'm going to kill myself. I just can't go on. It's like, dude, chill out. You just fucking met her. It seems like you met her 20 minutes ago. And now you're already, like, this upset. But I guess when the life expectancy back then is, like, 20 years old, you want to fall in love and get married as quickly as possible. It's like, if, if she dies, there's no one else out there for me. I might as well just kill myself. It was just crazy. And there's some hokey dialogue, like very exposition-y, like too much exposition in some scenes. Like It's just like, I, I get it. Like There was just some weak dialogue in the movie to me. But final thoughts, it was all right. It just, it could have 
been tightened in the middle or just put some more interesting things in the middle and you know because you know the atmosphere is great and the cinematography and all that stuff is fantastic there's some pretty cool looking scenes but i was just bored in the middle and that's what really hurt it the most for me um so yeah like if you like black and white movies you like baba films i think you should definitely check this out but if you're not into older films because you think they're too slow this is going to be another one that's probably too slow for you so i don't know like maybe check it out when it comes to black sunday consider streaming it borrowing it from a friend or renting it at redbox all right spoilers spoilers not much to spoil but i like that we actually get to see an on-screen branding i was not expecting that i was expecting a cutaway but we actually get to see the person being branded and the skin burning and bubbling and shit like that so that was pretty cool and then there's a mask of nails being put on her face and then the guy like hammers it on and blood squirts out like fuck i was not expecting that in a 1960 movie but it's baba right and this one scene where, like, the horse carriage, it, like, crashes, the way it was shot and done, it was just kind of funny to me. Like, it seemed like there was a continuity error because one guy was on this side, and then when it crashed, he got out the door first before the other guy, and then it seemed like the horses were missing in that scene. So it just seemed like there was maybe a goof there, or maybe I just missed something. But then we get the scene with the huge bat attacking the guy, and I just thought this was hilarious. He's, like, hitting at the bat... He accidentally breaks open the tomb that's holding the dead witch. And you can tell in some shots that it's like a... The, a, this bat's way too huge. But B, you can see that there's like a string on it. And then he takes his gun out and shoots at the bat. It's just ridiculous. And then he bleeds all over the witch. And that's what brings her back. So if he just would have never did that, you know, shoot the bat and then cause himself to bleed, it never would have happened this movie um uh, you know the witch would never have been brought back to life but i like that we see like all these like insects and shit coming out of her skull it was pretty cool uh you know creepy image in the movie and then like her face slowly like regenerating like the flesh is coming back her eyeballs are coming so then the witch just because of a few drops of blood now had now she has the power to raise her former partner back from the dead and i love that shot of the casket and his body coming out of the dirt just love that scene and but she has the power to do that and she has the power to make her casket burst open she can do all this stuff but she can't stand up and she can't just walk away so she's got like all these powers but she can't move on her own and she can hypnotize people so then she hypnotizes the doctor to go you know, kill the other guy who she's after, and yada, yada, yada. Then the son, when his dad is dead, he's taking the death very well. Like, it's not even a big deal. Like, he is not even remotely sad. It's just like, there's no sadness in his voice right afterwards. He's just like, back to normal. Like, what's going on? And it's just funny how, like, women in older films, I've seen, it's, I, I've noticed this recently. It's like, they always fainted. You know, I was going through, like, the Fly movies back in the day. It seems like women back then in movies, they always fainted. They go, oh. They, like, she faints twice in this movie. And so then I guess this guy, Boris, was killed. I don't even know who he was. Maybe they sent him to go get somebody, and I forgot. But, yeah, so we got that guy. He's dead. And so, <laughs> and then... The guy crawls backwards and then he falls into like a pit, a death pit, but it looked like he purposely threw himself in. He's crawling backwards and then his one arm goes in the hole and then he just tilts, he like, turns his whole body over. It looked like he threw himself in. It didn't seem natural. <laughs> so then they stab this doctor's eye. He's like, they dig up the body. They think it's going to be a different body, but it's the other guy and I guess to put his soul at rest, they take a nail and they actually like drive it through his eyeball. That, that was pretty cool. And and then somehow the dad who was murdered, he just comes back to life only to then get thrown into the fireplace and melt. And we actually get to see his head. It's clearly a dummy head, but 
it's like slowly melting from the fire. So another cool effect. And then, so then the mob comes in, they just, they, they grab the witch and they quickly already have this thing set up outside to burn her at the stake. And it was just funny, like they come in and there's two Katyas, but he finds out that this is the real one. This is the fake one. And he just says, you know, this is the bad one. And they just immediately take his word on it. Like, we believe you. And they just chase her out there. It's like, well, he could be wrong. And then you could kill the wrong one. But they believe him. It's a good thing they do. I mean, yeah, they killed the right one. But it was just funny. It's like, well, what if he was wrong? What if that was the real Katya that you're killing? And you're just taking this guy at his word? But yeah, this is when the guy's like, he thinks Katya is dead. And he's like, oh, my God. I'm never going to move on from this. It's like, dude, there was no scene that I saw that where they had any connection. There was no interest between, like, no love interest at all. They didn't go on a date. They never they never held hands. They never kissed. Maybe I missed it because, like I said, I was pretty fucking bored in the middle. So maybe I was just, like, in my own head. I wasn't paying attention. But there was nothing going on between them. And now he's like, oh, my God, it's the end of the world. And then he kisses her like Sleeping Beauty, and she comes back to life. And then, you know, happy ending, the end. And so, yeah, that's it. I mean, that's all I got to say about the movie. I just thought that whole ending there was a bit silly, him just being so over dramatic about it. Like, he was going on for, like, a full minute or two about how he was never going to, like, come back from this grief. Like, it was just the end of the world. I might as well just end it all now. <laughs> it was just crazy. So... Yep, there you go. Those are my thoughts on Black Sunday. Uh, let me know what you think about this classic in the comments below. And let me know if I'm wrong about something. I'm sure you will. Uh, let me know in the comments below. Thank you so much again to my patron for recommending me this and continuing to support my channel. Uh, Jeanette Spivak. Spivak. <laughs> I know I always probably keep saying your name wrong, but Spivak. Spivak. I'm thinking it's one of those. Thank you for continuing to support me, and uh, also, uh, in case you haven't done it yet, hit the like button if you like what you've seen here, and you can become a subscriber today just by clicking on my cartoon face in about five seconds. And remember, it's just an opinion. You don't need to get butthurt about it. <laughs>